If you contemplate the surahs in the Quran, like the stories of the prophets and messengers, you'll notice that they're repeated throughout the Quran. And there's wisdom and lessons behind that. Look at the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. It was once mentioned once. It's possible the wisdom could be that it involved the mistake of a woman and Islam wants to teach us a lesson from the overall story. That's why it was mentioned. And it was mentioned once to teach us a lesson to cover the faults of others. Some ulama like al Zarkashi, al Qarafi, Ibn Hajar al Haytami, al Alusi, Taqi al Din al Maqrizi, if I remember correctly, and others mentioned that it's dislike for women to learn Surah Yusuf, and that's, why, that's possibly why it was mentioned once. Some even allege that there's an authentic hadith that deters or dislikes for women to learn Surah Yusuf because of their weakness and because of the story of the wife of the Aziz. And that's very wrong. We don't have surahs in this context that are specific for men and specific for women in this context. The narrations deterrent or disliking for women to learn Surah Yusuf are fabricated or munkar. Because we know Umar and Uthman radiallahu anhum used to habitually read Surah Yusuf in the loud prayers like, like Salat uh, al-Fajr. So much that there's narrations that some memorized Surah Yusuf from Umar and Uthman radiallahu anhum reciting the Surah so much. And we have additional proof that there was women in the congregation. In fact, it's countered by the fact that Aisha radiallahu anha uh, as a young girl knew the story. During the time when she was accused, radiallahu anha, she was going through a very difficult time. She had a brief mental lapse in the name of Yaqub. She said during that difficult time, I'll reiterate what Abu Yusuf said. She wanted to say, I'll reiterate what Yaqub said, but in that difficult time, she couldn't remember the name. She said, I'll reiterate what Abu Yaqub said. Patience is most fitting. Wallahi ma ajidu li wa lakum mathalan. Qalat wal tamastu isma Yaqub. Falam akdir alayhi illa Aba Yusuf. Hina qal. Fasabru jameel. Wallahu al musta'anu. Ala ma tasifun. Point being is that Aisha radiallahu anha at that young age knew the story of Surah Yusuf. So that's incorrect. Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned this, but from what I gather from his quotes is that he meant it in that some fussaq would use the surah to uh, pray on women. It's like saying, وَيْلٌ musallin, Woe to those who pray and stop it. That's why he suggested, in a way suggested, to learn Surah An-Nur with Surah Yusuf. Because it has the details of lowering the gaze and the punishment of zina and other matters that pertain to this. One can say, mentioning the sur Surah Yusuf once, might have been an additional challenge to the kuffar. You couldn't produce verses like the ones that were repeated over and over, no matter how many times they were repeated. And you can't produce one like this one that's mentioned from beginning to end in one chapter, in one place, at one time, the ultimate lesson I believe in mentioning the story of Surah Yusuf once, yet the stories of some other messengers and prophets were repeated over and over, is because of Tawheed. The story of Yusuf centers around a family feud with some dunya hardships, prison, separated from loved ones, betrayal, being enslaved, we all have these hardships in our lives and we'll continue to have them. Every one of us has those. The lesson is to put your tawakkul on Allah, have sabr and ihtisab, put it behind your back and move on. Don't dwell on it for the rest of your life.
And that's why it was mentioned once. The summary. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِ وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Have sabr, taqwa, and move on. Family feuds, quarrels, someone oppressed you. End it with the one-liner. لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم. Let it go. Just as the Messenger ﷺ did in the conquest of Mecca. The other stories are stories of Iman and Kufr. Like the stories of Shu'ayb, Nuh, Hud, Ibrahim, Salih, Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Uziman and Kufr, Tawheed and Shirk, tyrants and slaves of Allah. It wasn't a little family feud or a betrayal or oppression that someone committed against you. It's an ongoing feud no muwahid can surrender to. No muwahid surrenders to kufr and says, let's just forget it and forgive it. And to establish that, the stories need to be repeated and reiterated. They were repeated because of the danger of kufr and because it's horrendous, dunya and akhirah. Floods, winds, shouts, and the more severe ending in the akhirah. With the battle of kufr going on until Yawm Al-Qiyamah, a da'iyah and follower of Tawheed, following in the footsteps of the messengers, faces horrific circumstances, and he needs to be on the path. Repetition of these stories will soothe the heart and keep one steadfast. The lesson from those stories is summarized in patience and steadfastness. Fasbir. Like who? Like the messengers. That's why the stories are so many in the Quran. Fasbir kama sabara ulu al-azbi. Ma yuqalu laka illa ma qad qila lil-rusuli min qabli. Whatever is said to you is said to the messenger. When someone says something about me, I say, oh, it was said about the Prophet ﷺ. And Allah told the Prophet, what was said about you was said about the messengers before you. وَلَقَدْ كُذِّبَتْ رُسُلٌ مِّن قَبْلِكَ فَصَبَرُوا عَلَى مَا كُذِّبُوا وَأُوذُوا حَتَّى أَتَاهُمْ نَصْرُنَا وَاصْبِرْ وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The bottom line is that the wisdom I believe in this matter is that with Tawheed in Kufr, there is no لا تثريب عليكم اليوم. Let's forget, forgive each other and forget kufr and everything. Put it behind our back and move on. With iman and kufr, it's ongoing, constantly ongoing. There's no surrendering to kufr. There's no forgiving kufr. There's no tolerating kufr. It's wabada bainana wabainakum wal adawat wal baghdaw abadan hatta tu'minu billahi wahdah.